Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we're going to study dividing fractions, this time using the shortcut, the regular way it is usually taught in all school books. Okay, and for that rule, I mean, I wrote it here, to divide by any number, fraction or otherwise, you can multiply by its reciprocal number. So, for the rule, we need to first study what is a reciprocal number. And two numbers are reciprocal numbers if their product is one. That means, for example here, two-fifths and five-halves are each other's reciprocal numbers. Because if you multiply them, you get one. Or seven and one-seventh. The reciprocal number of seven is one-seventh. And the reciprocal of one-seventh is seven. Because if you multiply them, you get one. And so, of course, students usually need to practice this just a little bit, like the reciprocal of two-thirds is... Basically, you flip this. You flip the numerator and denominator, and so three over two is its reciprocal, because if you multiply, you would get six over six, right? Which is one. Or the reciprocal of seven is one-seventh, like I mentioned, because seven times one-seventh is one. And the reciprocal of one and one fourth. First, write this as a fraction. Okay? You see it is five fourths, and then you can flip it. It is four fifths. Because five fourths times four fifths is one. Here, this might look a little bit confusing at first, but let me explain. It still ties in with reciprocal numbers. You see? Division is the opposite operation of multiplication. So from each of these multiplications here, we can write a division which starts with 1. Division goes from here to here. 1 divided by this number equals this number, right? So I have an example here. 1 divided by 2 thirds must equal 3 halves. Because 3 halves times 2 thirds equals 1. So this division sentence is true, because it has the reciprocal numbers here. And this is trying to now show it visually what it means. What does this division sentence mean? One way to interpret division is that how many times does this number, divisor, the divisor, fit into the dividend? How many times does two-thirds fit into one? And the answer should be one and a half times. You know, three over two is one and a half. Let's look at it. Does two-thirds really fit into one pie? Okay, here's two-thirds. Here's my one whole pie, right? So how many times can I fit this one in there? First of all, I can fit it one full time into this piece of the one. And then this leftover piece here, the one-third, this one would, half of this one would go into the one-third, right? So two-thirds fits into the whole one pie one and a half times. Right? Or it is here, 3 over 2, or 1 and a half times. Similarly here, my division sentence is true because it is saying the same as the reciprocal numbers. You know, 7 halves times 2 sevenths equals 1. So therefore 1 divided by 2 sevenths must equal 7 over 2, or 3 and a half. And then we think of fitting. Does 2 sevenths really fit into one hole that many times? Okay. Here, I am visualizing one whole as a stick that is divided into seven parts, seven sevenths, or one whole. This is my one. And so two sevenths is, you know, two little parts. How many times does this fit in there? Okay, so it would fit once here, second time, and third time. And then into this one little piece, of course, half of it fits there. So three and a half times, right? Just like it says here. Or, how many times would four-fifths fit into one whole pie? Here's my four-fifths. Here's my whole pie. Okay, it fits in there once, just nicely, right? Into this part here. And then into this little part, one-fifth. Okay, it doesn't fit fully into there, but just exactly one slice of this thingy would fit into that one slice, right? So, there's four slices. One-fourth of this thingy would fit in there. So in total, one and one-fourth times, okay? So that's what this is meaning here. Now, 
We will use this idea later when we look at why the rule works. Let's now first look at the rule for fraction division and do a few problems. Okay, to divide by a fraction, or by any number actually, you can just multiply by its reciprocal number. For example, 7 eighths divided by 2 thirds. Instead of dividing, we're going to change it to a multiplication problem. 7 eighths is going to get multiplied by the reciprocal of this, or 3 over 2. You flip it. And now we multiply normally. 7 times 3 is 21. And then 8 times, three, 8 times 2 excuse me, is 16. Which this is then 1 whole and 5 sixteenths. Okay? 9 tenths divided by 4. The same thing. We change it to a multiplication problem. 9 tenths doesn't change. We're going to multiply it by the reciprocal of this number. And the reciprocal of 4 is 1 4. There, now we go 9 times 1, 9, and 10 times 4, 40. And that doesn't simplify anything. Here's 6 divided by 2 and a half. This is a mixed number. But the same rule works. You just first need to think of its reciprocal number. And for that, you probably need to change it to a fraction. Okay, this would be um, 5 halves. So to flip it, it is going to be 2 fifths. So we get 6 times 2 fifths. And this is 12 fifths, or 2 and 2 fifths. You can at this point actually ask, does this answer make sense? Does two and a half fit into six? A little over two times? Yes, it does. Okay. Seven divided by five. Now, you actually don't need to use this rule to divide this kind of... It's a whole numbers, whole number division. But let's just check. It actually still works. I can write this as a multiplication problem seven times. And then the reciprocal of five is one-fifth. And seven times one-fifth is seven-fifths which is 1 and 2 fifths. And of course, you could have written 7 divided by 5 just directly in this form, 7 divided by 5. So you didn't need that rule. But it still works, because it's a general rule. It's not just for fractions. And now let's last a look, why does this rule work? And that is where we will fall back on this idea of fitting. Fitting the divisor into the dividend and the reciprocal numbers. I'm looking basically at this problem first. Yeah, 2 divided by 3 fourths. Which is how many times does 3 fourths fit into 2? But as a helping problem, I will use this. How many times does 3 fourths fit into 1 whole pi? And that I know, it's going to be 4 thirds or 1 and 1 third times. Because these are reciprocal numbers. So I know the answer to this problem. And so therefore, 3 fourths fits into 2 pi's double as many times as it fitted into 1. So the answer must be 2 times that, right? 2 times 4 thirds. But that is, as you compare this and this, division changed to multiplication and the 3 fourths was flipped, right? And so then we get 8 thirds, which is 2 and 2 thirds times. Oh, here. This is my problem I'm looking at. Half, did a, half divided by 3 eighths. How many times would 3 eighths fit into half? A little over one time, right? But to think about it, first I think that, okay, 3 eighths would fit into one whole pi this many times. Two and two thirds times. So, to just to half a pi, it would just fit half that many times, right? So I calculate half times that, a third. Half times the reciprocal of this. Again, the division changed to multiplication and 3 eighths was flipped. So I get here, I can simplify 2. I get 4 over 3. 1 and 1 third times. That makes sense if you think of 3 eighths and 1 half. 3 eighths fits into 1 half a little over 1 time. And this, the same line of thinking works no matter what kind of problem you have. Here's another fraction problem. I can think that 3 eighths goes into 1 whole pi exactly 8 over 3 times, okay? And so into 4 fifths, it would fit 4 fifths that times many times. 
profit times 8 over 3 times. So, this may be a little bit difficult to follow, don't worry if it is. So if students don't understand it, they can just apply the rule and solve the division problems, but at least some students will be able to follow the argument and therefore understand where the rule comes from, and so it makes sense to them. 